Before we do anything, we need a specific solid definition for growth. We are going to start with the following definition. The amount of time that it takes for an object's specific parameter to double in size. Does anyone know what that means? Let me give you an example. Let's say that we have a ball of some kind. Let's say that its initial diameter was, let's say, around a meter. That's a really big ball, but you know, just go with me on this because it's about to get much larger. Let's say that we start expanding this ball by blowing into it. Let's say that after 10 seconds, we find out that the diameter of the ball is 32 meters. After we do some basic calculations, we find out that the amount of time that it takes for the diameter of the ball to double is roughly once every two seconds. But diameter might not be the best parameter to use here because there's another parameter that grows much faster. The volume of the ball grows once every 0.666667 seconds, not every two seconds. First of all, let's kick the dead elephant out of the room. We are not going to include abstract mathematical functions that do not correspond to something real, something physical in our universe. Why? Because you could always come up with a faster growing function than the fastest growing function someone else came up with. It's like asking the question, what is the largest number? If you don't put some conditions in place, then you could always add a plus one at the end. Yeah, let's say that we have x, for example, which grows, but you know it grows faster, x to the power of two. Faster than that, two to the power of x. Faster than that, x factorial, and so on and so forth. If you're not happy with that, you can now start using some weird notations, like Noth's up arrow notation. Now back to that ball, as with anything that grows, usually there is a limit. It cannot keep growing forever. If it kept growing at the rate that it was growing at, then its size would exceed the size of the observable universe in about three minutes. That cannot happen. Now, depending on what the ball is made of, usually once it passes its limit, what's going to happen to it? Well, you know, scra, I think that's how the song goes. Basically, the ball is going to pop. However, there are cases in reality where this growth doesn't actually seem to have a limit. It keeps going on for seemingly forever, although those are very rare. The one that I know of is the expansion of the universe. The further and further you look at an object, the faster and faster it seems to be receding away from you, as long as it's not gravitationally bound to you. And this does not seem to be something that is slowing down. Let's say that we have a bunch of planets. Let's imagine that we are the planet at the center. Let's say that the distances between us and the closest planets is about 1 billion light years. Let's say that the distances between us and the second closest planets is about 2 billion light years, and so on and so forth. The reason the distances are so huge is to make sure that we are not gravitationally bound to any of those planets. You're going to find out after you do some calculations that the amount of time it takes for the distance between us and those planets to double is about 9.6 billion years. Yes, that's a very long time. In terms of volume, however, it takes less time for the volume difference between us and those objects to double. Now, before I move on, let me just clarify something here, because some of you probably have jumped up and have been like, I thought that the universe's expansion is accelerating. This doesn't look like the universe's expansion to me. Look, Batman, maybe, this is the accelerating expansion of the universe. Distances are doubling between objects that are not gravitationally bound to each other every set period of time. What you're referring to here is an accelerating, accelerating expansion of the universe, which would not make sense because things would fly away from each other at a much faster rate. Now, the thing is, it's not exactly very clear whether this expansion is going to continue forever or not. The fact is, current evidence does point to the fact that this is a likely outcome. So we are going to go with this assumption. That means the universe could keep growing essentially until, well, there is no limit. With that said, though, we haven't really answered the question in this video. For that, we need to go into another definition of growth, which is the following. What is the number of doublings that an object's parameter goes through before it reaches its limit. 
To explain what that actually means, let's go back to that ball that I've mentioned in the beginning part of this video. Let's say that the limit for growth of this ball is, let's say, 32 meters, when the diameter reaches 32 meters. Now, in reality, when anything approaches its growth limit, there is usually a growth slowdown before it reaches this limit. But let's imagine it's a sudden burst for simplicity's sake. Let's say that we calculate the number of doublings for its diameter. We find out that the number of doublings for the diameter of the ball before it reaches its limit is five doublings. But if we take volume into account, it's 15 doublings. So if we want to answer this question with the new definition of growth, let's just take the highest value we can get out of an object that would give us the highest number of doublings. To give you some actual real cases, let's say that we want to find the number of doublings for the human population. The lowest point in the number of humans that we've ever had is around 10,000 individuals. This is the point where humans almost became extinct. The highest point, the limit, is thought to be the maximum number of humans that could be supported given current methods of food production, which is around 10 billion. We find out that the number of doublings is around 20. Let's say that we want to find the number of doublings for the volume of a human. Let's say that the smallest point for a human is when he or she was an immature egg. And the limit in this particular case would be the volume of this human when he or she became an adult. We find out that the number of doublings for the volume of this human is around 34 doublings. The issue is this kind of exercise can be a bit arbitrary. Why? Because you could always redefine the beginning and the end points for the growth of something that would give you more doublings than before. For example, instead of using an immature egg as the starting point for the growth of a human, we can use the first individual atom that formed the basis of this immature egg. We're going to forego volume as atoms can be condensed, so using volume does not really make sense as a parameter. Using this new definition, now we get much more doublings than before, but we can also make the growth limit to be much higher. Instead of an adult human, let's say that we use the sun. Now we get even more doublings than before. Is there any way for us to escape the arbitrary nature of this exercise? Yes, there is. And that is by finding the biggest gap between the starting point of the growth of something and its end point. Now, before we move on, it is important for us to understand the difference between the entire universe and the small part of the entire universe that we have access to, the observable universe. The observable universe is, at this point in time, is a 93 billion light years diameter sphere which centers around an observer. Given that we are the observers here, then this sphere centers around us, but it can be centered around any other observer anywhere else in the universe. Given that we are limited only by the amount of information that is available in the part of the universe that we have access to, the observable universe, it's actually difficult to estimate the size of the entire universe. I'm not going to go into the discussion for why this is the case. I actually go in details in my video, is there a center of the universe? But what I will say is, given that the size of the entire universe is difficult to estimate, we could still estimate the size of the observable universe at a particular point in time. And that is something that we could in fact measure the growth of which. At the very beginnings of the universe, when time equals zero, it's actually difficult to define the size of the universe because, well, you know, volume doesn't have a definition at time equals zero. So we need to move just a bit, just slightly away from time equals zero. We need to move to time equaling 10 to the power of minus 35 seconds. Between 10 to the power of minus 35 seconds to 10 to the power of minus 32 seconds, the universe has gone through an unbelievable growth spurt. This period is called inflation. The radius of the universe at that point in time would have been around this much, and it would have grown to around one meter just during the period of inflation. But we should not be using radius or diameter, just multiply the values by two. We should be using volume because volume grows at a much faster rate. We find out after doing some calculations that the number of doublings that the universe had gone through just during inflation is 518 doublings. 
This is actually higher than the number of doublings we've had since inflation until today. Yes, it's that much. Now, if we add everything up, we find out that the number of doublings that the universe had gone through in terms of its volume is around 784 doublings. Now, to be clear here, there's a tiny issue in what I've mentioned. The observable universe, technically speaking, is growing and shrinking at the same time. How does that make sense? When I mean growing, I mean the amount of space between objects that are not gravitationally bound to each other is increasing over time. But the same expansion makes the amount of information that objects which are not gravitationally bound to each other can collect about each other to become fuzzy over time. There is something called the cosmic event horizon. This is also a sphere that centers around us, like the observable universe, but it is much smaller. It is 32 billion light years in diameter. It describes the point after which no information can get to us if this information is emitted right now. And even if this information is traveling at the speed of light, this information can never get to us because the expansion of the universe at this point in time beyond the cosmic event horizon is faster than the speed of light. But let's say that there was an object that emitted a photon just within the edge of the cosmic event horizon. It's not outside the cosmic event horizon, just within a very small edge of the cosmic event horizon. This photon will actually get to us but it will become fuzzy. How? By the time it gets to us, because the universe is going to be expanding during its trip, it's going to be elongated beyond recognition. We would have no idea what kind of object emitted it by the time it gets to us. And this is how the observable universe, technically speaking, is expanding. The amount of space is increasing, but the amount of information that you could practically collect is decreasing. So, expanding, and shrinking. So with all of that said, the answer to the question, what is the fastest growing thing, or what is the most growiest thing, we have two questions by the end of this video because we've defined growth in two different ways. That's why we have two questions. But with that said, it appears to be that the answer to both questions appears to be the universe, or at least the part of the universe that we have access to, the observable universe. It is the fastest growing thing because of inflation and it is the most growiest thing because it seems to be the thing that experienced the most number of doublings since the Big Bang until today. But not only that, if we look all the way until the end of the universe, which would be at t equals infinity, the number of doublings seems to approach infinity. It will never actually reach infinity if you go to at any point in time in the future, there seems to be always more doublings than the number of doublings you've had before. So you can see why the universe appears to be the thing that is the fastest growing and the mostest growing. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.